God for His Spirit. Amen. Let us stand as we continue to welcome Him into our presence. I was glad when He said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing. We are glad in it. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for life, for health, and for strength. We thank you for grace, and we thank you for mercy. And Father, we thank you for your presence and your power that's filling this room right now. And we come today as empty vessels, waiting to be filled with your spirit. Father, we didn't come today waiting to get here to worship you, but we came with a spirit of worship. For you have declared in the 100th Psalm that we are to enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and enter your courts with praise. So we come today, Father, saying thank you. And we come today saying thank you for your grace and your mercy. We come today to worship you because you are worthy to be worshipped. Father, we realize much is going on and much has happened, but we know that you have it all in your hands. And we come today, Father, to move all, asking you to move all distractions and hindrances from us that may prohibit us from worshiping you in spirit and in truth. So, Father, we pray today that you will pour down your spirit upon your musicians and your choir and Pour down your spirit in the pew and in the pulpit. That all might know that you are God and beside thee, there is none of Now, Lord, we come today asking you to bless those who are in this place. And, Father, we pray that we have come today to be participators and not spectators. Those who may be in the virtual space, we pray likewise for, for them, Father. For we come today to lift you up to lift you up, to magnify and glorify your name. And when we leave this place today, we want to be able to say that it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. In the matchless and marvelous, magnificent name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. We say amen. 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 You may be seated. We thank God today for his presence and for the presence of life, health, and strength. We thank you for allowing us to see this the seventh day of another month. Nothing but his grace and his mercy. We thank God today for Ms. Rose Crocker who is with us today. Amen. We have something to celebrate today, y'all. Amen. We thank God. It's good to see you, Ms. Rose, and your family. Good to see you all. It's been a long time. But God is good. He's a great God. And a great God deserves a great praise. That's praise this morning, my friend.
contact person is Eloise McCree, and I have her telephone number as well. And I have the sign-up sheet if you would like to give blood for that purpose. Ms. Rose, we're glad you're here. You've been telling me when I'm down there, you're coming. <laughs> so I'm glad to see you here this morning. Amen. I talked to Ms. Right. Rose yesterday. I thought she would be here as well, but uh, she's here only for today. She's going back in the morning to uh, with her daughter in Atlanta. So, uh, but I, I thought she was going to be here. We talked last night, but evidently something might have came up, and she'll be going back to Atlanta in the morning. We're glad all of you are here. We hope to be blessed by the word that's been given to Pastor Sanders for our hearing. We pray that you take the word, use it for your everyday lives, continue to love others as well as yourselves, and continue to know who God is in your life. Let us be mindful of our announcements, particularly the one with sickle cell. Um, it attacks the black race. Amen. So let us do our part in being a blood donor. I'm a donor there for the Red Cross and have been called in on occasion to yield to a sickle cell patient. So let us, let us be obedient, those of us who can. I understand that there are those of us who can't heal, but those of us who can, let us sign up. And if you can't, encourage someone else to sign up. Amen. These Amen. things are ravaging our black population. And many times it's only us that can help us. So let us, let us be mindful and let us be Governed and moved to be a help to somebody. I heard a stat yesterday and heard it again today that only 3% of the population gives blood. And there's always a need for it. So let us uh, be, be mindful of that. Because one day you might need some blood. Amen. Amen. And there's an there's a, a, a issue in the black, the black population that some of us are some of the, we, we are recipients more times than not for organs. We want to receive organs, but we don't want to give organs. Amen. 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 We want somebody to save our lives, but we don't want to save nobody else's life. Amen. 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 And we got to get out of that mind front of always wanting to be on the receiving end, but never on the giving end. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. But when it comes time for us, for somebody to give us something, we ready for it. But when we get ready to leave here, we don't want to leave our boy in the end of What you going to take it with you for? You're going to heaven, you're going to get a glorified body. Amen. You don't need them. Amen. 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 Sounds comical, but it's true. Amen. We're always talking about going to heaven, getting a new body, getting new eyes, new legs, new feet, new hands. But we don't want to leave anything behind that somebody else might leave. Amen. Amen. It's, it's tight, but it's right. We as, we as a people, we as a people, we as a people, we're going to have to get out of this mind frame of somebody always giving to us and we never giving to anybody else. And then we wonder why we aren't blessed. Doesn't the Bible say it's more blessed to give than to receive? And I don't believe he was always talking about money. Amen. 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 A lot of us got friends like that. You always giving to them and they never give anything to you. You always pouring into them and they never pouring into you. And when you pour all out, what happens then? They walk all off and leave. So it's time, it's time for us to start giving. 
in all areas and aspects of our lives. It's giving time. It's giving time. You want God to bless you. You go out and open up your hand and let out what he's given you. Amen. Let us stand as we get ready to give to give to God. All of his ears. He don't ask us for 10%. Amen. All of his ears. What if God asked us for the nine and left us with 10? Amen. 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 And we, we, we keep all of it and struggle. And all God asks for is 10%. And I declare, when you give God what God asks of you, he will open up the windows of heaven. He will. He will. He'll open up the windows of heaven. Sister, can you lead us in our offertory prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you that you enable us to come out to your house one more time. We just want to say thank you. Father, we thank you that you have enabled us to give back just a portion of what you have given to us. And Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Father. I thank you for everyone that here. Father, I thank you for those that are on their way. Lord, I thank you that you've given us a portion of health and strength. Father, we are able to come out one more time and give unto you. And Father, we give cheerfully because, Father, we know that you are going to bless us. And Father, we know that those blessings may not come back monetarily, but Father, we thank you. Those blessings may come back in hell. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Those blessings may come back in our children being saved. Father, we thank you that those blessings may come back when we are traveling the dangerous highway. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. These and all other blessings. We ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cheerfully bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Amen.
we go to God and ask him to heal us, he didn't do it. So why Jesus did this? He had the cross in his hand. He didn't do it. The Bible says Jesus went all the way to the cross. So that's the mindset, you know, when, when things get, when, when you feel like giving up, yeah, yeah. think about remembering the cross. Mm -hmm. And when we remember the cross, we remember Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus did do it. Yeah. Let the church say amen. 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 <laughs> this morning is coming from Matthew the 6th chapter verse 1 9 through 8. I'll be reading out of the New King James Version and it reads as follows. Take heed that you do not do yourself charitable deeds before me to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward for your, for your father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sign a trumpet before you, as a hypocrite do in the synagogue and in the street, that they may have glory from me. <laughs> Assured, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, mm -hmm. that your charity charge of a deed may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Yeah. Right. And when you pray, you shall not be like a hypocrite. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corner of the street, that they may be seen by men. As sure as I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in the secret place. And the Father who sees, sees in secret will reward you open. Yes. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition mm -hmm. as the heathen do. For they think that they will be cured for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your heavenly Father knows the thing you have need. Uh, before you ask, yeah. may the Lord have a
Amen. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Yes. Amen. Yes. He deserves all of our worship. Yes. And he deserves all of our praise. Yes. Because he has done so much for us. Yes. And he's still doing much for yes. us. He blesses us even when we don't ask for it. He still blesses us. Amen. Amen. He has promised us our needs, but God gives us our wants as well. Amen. He gives us many times more than our hearts or our pocketbooks can desire. But that's just who God is. He blesses us even when we don't deserve it. Amen. Amen. For that, we need to give him praise. Yes, yes. And we need to give him glory and honor. Amen. 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 He blesses us many times by not letting things happen to us. Many times we only think about what he does, but we should be thankful for what he doesn't do. Or for what he doesn't to happen to us. How he allowed something to deter us at home for just a few minutes. And then on our route to where we were going, there was an accident. We could have been in that accident. But it was God's something on the inside. We don't know why it was that we couldn't get it right before we left home. But then when you see the accident, you wonder, you look back and wonder, that could have been me in that accident. Amen. 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 So a lot of times being late ain't always a bad thing. Amen. Amen. Good to see Miss Sterling and her family here today. Amen. Amen. Good to see her. Amen. You keep saying God is a good God. Yes. And He's worthy to be praised. Yes. Good to see you and your family here with us. Amen. Pray on your way back down the road that God would give you traveling grace and mercy. Yes. And that He will continue to strengthen and heal your body. Yes. Amen. Amen. We honor God today, who is our Father, to Jesus Christ, the Son, Savior, and Brother to the Holy Spirit, he is our comfort and our guide to all of these preachers who are gathered here with us today, to the officers and members. Again, we thank God for being in the land of the living one more time. Here we are on the seventh day of the fourth month of the year. And I declare, y'all, we ought to be thankful yes. for being here. Yes. So much is going on in our world, in our nation. There's earthquakes in New York. When I read somewhere, there was an earthquake here in South Carolina. Um, two feet of snow in the Northeast in April. Amen. Don't tell me God isn't talking to yes. us. Yes. The Bible declares that when there's earthquakes in diverse places, that he's on his way back. We're living in the last days. And I wonder how much attention are we paying? Because it seems like the more God talks to us, the more wicked we get. The further away from him we get. But he keeps extending his hand of mercy upon our lives. And he doesn't give us second chances. He gives us multiple chances to get it right. So while he is giving us these chances, we need to take advantage of each and every day God gives us. Because we don't know when it's our last day. We might leave here and not even make it home. Amen. Amen. So let us be mindful of who he is and what he is doing. Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. 
We have found it between standing in reverence to the reading of his word, Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. And it reads, I'm reading from the message. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. Amen. 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 That'll preach by itself right now. I want to talk today from this from this subject, a caring father. A caring father. We're living, we're living in some tough, turbulent, and trying times. We're in times where people care only for themselves. When I look at the United States, I see one that cares for those who have and care little to nothing for those who don't have. People care nothing about walking on you, walking around you, walking over you and walking through you just as long as they get what they want. In our text today, I'm glad that there, there is a caring father. We have a father we don't, who we don't have to jump through hoops for. We don't have to call a meeting in Congress to get him to do for us. We don't have to get the president to sign off on the bill for him to do for us. We don't have to do a favor for this father and a faith for a favor for this one and a favor for that one in order for the father to move. We can go to him in prayer with a sincere heart and ask him for what we want. We don't have to speak with eloquence. We don't have to impress him with our vocabulary. We don't have to go to him with a formula for how to bless us. We don't have to get on his schedule. He knows what we want. And he knows what we need. Paul tells us in Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Then Psalm 23 and 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. For God is a caring father. He's a supporting and supportive father. He's a father we can depend on. He's a father we can trust in. He cares for us no matter the gender, the bank account, the religious affiliation or denomination, whether you're saved or whether you're lost. God cares for you. In these times, we need to know there is a caring father. We need to connect to this father. We need to communicate with this father. But most of all, we need to celebrate this father. <laughs> we need to know how to talk to this father. When we learn how to talk to him and that we can talk to him, we need to talk to him regularly. <laughs> uh, we need to do more than have a casual relationship with him. We need to take time and make time and talk to our father. We need to know he wants to talk to us and he wants to be there for us. When we trust and believe in him, he will show us how much of a caring father he is. He will be there in the good and the bad times. Well, Jesus is teaching us in these Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 15 on prayer and giving. This is part of his sermon on the mount. He's simple and he's practical. He's not here to impress, but he's here to inform. He comes to bring light to dark situations. In this particular part of the text, he's telling the crowd, don't be like the Pharisees. They were well-learned religious experts, but hypocritical and legalistic. They wanted people to know they were smart. They also demonstrated a heart that was more about themselves than it was about the people. In verses one through four, Jesus wants us to know the importance of giving in secret. Instead of bragging about what we give, let others do it for us. When we do things, do them under the radar. 
Do them not looking to be reciprocated. Do them not wanting your name in light. Yes. God will reward you openly in verses 5 through 8. Jesus tells the crowd to have a relationship with him, but don't highlight it in public. There were Pharisees who were praying to be seen and to be heard. They are praying for accolades and applause. They want the world to know they have it going on with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus says their reward is in hearing people brag on them. Yeah. But Jesus wants the crowd to know, don't worry about being seen or heard. Tell me everything on your heart. Amen. Not looking to be pumped up. When you speak to me in secret, I will bless you, bless you. for everyone to see. It is in verse 7. Jesus tells them, you don't have to manipulate me. You don't have to beg me. He's telling them, you don't have to scheme and scam me to get me to answer your prayer. He sees all and knows all. He wants to be involved in their lives when there's consistent and regular conversation. You don't have to manipulate God. Just be sincere and he will move. He is a caring father. Jesus knows there are those who have multiple gods and many names they call on. There are people who are trying to flatter their gods to get what they want. But we serve a God who knows his name. And all we need to do is say, Father. And we've gotten his attention. He wants to hear from us. He wants to talk to us. For God cares about his children. He's concerned about every area of our lives. Yeah. He's not in the business of neglecting, denying, or abusing his children. He wants us to trust and depend on him. Yeah. So what does God care about me for? How, how does he show me he's a caring father? First of all, he shows me, he shows us that we are caring father because he cares for our mental welfare. Uh, there's what's being said now in our nation about mental health and the importance of it. There are people walking away from good paying jobs because they recognize that money isn't everything. And we have a God who cares about our mental well-being. He wants us to have peace of mind. He can bring peace when there is confusion. Yes. He can keep us grounded when everything around us is falling apart. Yes. An unknown author said this about peace. He said, peace, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. Yes. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, thou will keep him in perfect peace. Yes whose mind is stayed on thee yeah, yeah. because he trusteth in thee. Yeah. Let's make that pretty. If thou, let's say it like this, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God yeah. because he trusteth in God. Yeah. Then in John 14 and 27, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding to keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Our Father wants us to be mentally balanced and sound. He wants us to bring those things that are troubling us to him. Yeah. And he's going to make things all right. Yeah. Secondly, a caring father shows his care for us by being concerned about our social development. God is not only concerned about our spiritual development, but he wants us to be able to cope socially. He wants us to excel and succeed in all areas of our lives. But yeah. Jeremiah 29 and 11 declares, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saying the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, yeah. to give you 
an expected end. Yeah. For he shows us that he wants us to be developed in his word when he made Joseph in the Old Testament the number two man in Egypt after he got out of prison. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, but after they got out, they were promoted. Yeah. Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, yeah. that thou mayest prosper with whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, yeah. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, yeah. and then thou shalt have good success. Yeah. For thirdly, our Father shows us he cares about us by caring about our spiritual enrichment. Enrichment means to make rich or richer, especially by the addition or increase of some desirable quality, attribute, or ingredient. But God, our Father, cares about us being spiritually nourished and educated. For he tells us in 2 Timothy 2, 15, study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh, that's the key, unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Then that he goes one chapter over in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 that says all scripture is given by inspiration of God yeah. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We need to be connected to a source that will empower us and not drain us. We need to be connected to the Bible that will enlighten us and not put us in the dark. But God knows what we need. He cares about what type of enrichment we are receiving spiritually. Therefore, he wants us to get all of the knowledge and understanding so that we can be equipped to stand and help others to stand. Yeah. He wants us to be able to make things better when we relate to people. He wants us to preserve and not kill. He wants us to be light and not darkness. For as Christians, we need to always desire to be enriched, desire to be enhanced, desire to be upgraded, and improved. Fourthly and lastly, the most important way that our Father cares about our, our cares about us is through our personal salvation. Yeah. Mental welfare, social development, and spiritual enrichment are all excellent things to have. But when we possess the gift of salvation, yes, yes. all of the above mentioned will follow. Yeah. Well, salvation is the saving of human beings from death and separation from God yeah. by Christ's death and resurrection. It is good that he cares about our personal salvation, but God the Father not only cares about our salvation from sin, <clears throat> but he has rescued us from various illnesses and diseases. He has rescued us from some bad relationships. Yeah. He has rescued us from some bad people. Yeah. But at the end of the day, all of this is possible because of John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth yeah. in him should not perish yeah. but have everlasting life. Yeah. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. For it was Paul in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The story goes 
that begins with the other day in the mail, a credit card application arrived. The credit card application said, you have been qualified for a $15,000 limit. Uh, this meant that I had already been determined to be acceptable to the company. This meant that the credit card company had already given me okay. However, the invitation didn't automatically grant the person the membership. For in order to get the card, they had to fill out a form and send it back in. Yeah. Even though the company had already extended the credit approval, yeah. that didn't mean that the person would automatically get the card. They had to write back and say that they wanted the card. God has already pre-qualified us for heaven by paying for our sins on the cross. But he can only activate our account if we tell him we want him to do so. If you still believe that you must pay for it yourself, what you're saying is, I don't need your card, God. I've got my own and I'm going to satisfy you by my own human efforts. So a person needs to understand that in order to receive eternal life, you must admit that you are a sinner. And therefore, you're unable to save yourself. So as I close this morning, we ought to be glad we have a father who cares about our mental welfare, our social development, our spiritual enrichment, but he cares about our personal salvation. He cares about us having a home in heaven. John P. Key wrote, when you don't know who else to cast your cares on, <laughs> say you can cast your cares on Jesus. For he cares for you. For if you cast your cares on Jesus, he'll care for you. He says, I've had some rough times in my life. But with the Lord, I can have eternal life. And he goes on to say, whatever the problem, whatever the sickness, whatever the disease, Whatever is troubling you, I know that the Lord will. He'll see me through. He will. He will. He will see me through. Why will he see me through? Because be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will. God will take care of me. Why? Because he's my caring. Father. I'm glad I have a caring father. I have a caring earthly father and I have a caring heavenly father. We're glad. We should be glad that we have a caring father. So don't worry about what's going on in our world. We can't do anything about it. We, we can be concerned, but don't worry because you got a God who has told you, don't worry about tomorrow. Yes. Thank you, Lord. you have a father who's told you, don't worry about tomorrow. tomorrow. And if the birds and everything else are eating, don't you think he's going to feed us? Yes. A caring father yes. is concerned Thank you. about his children. Yes. He doesn't have to be made to keep up his children. He doesn't have to be forced to keep up his children. But I'm glad that we worship and serve a caring father. And all of us in here are his children by creation. But I come today that if you want to be his child by adoption, you must come to Jesus. If you want to get some of these blessings or all of these blessings that he has for those who already belong to him, come to Jesus. He blesses us every, every day we wake up. He blesses the saved and the lost. But if you really want all God has for you, give Jesus your life. He's already saved you. He's already paid the price. He just wants you to come. And your man, your hand, guard your heart, and everything will be better than you have it right now. Here's that one.
who needs a caring father. You need a caring father in your life. You may have a, a earthly caring father. That's good. He, that's, that's good to have. But this father can do what your earthly father can't do. He can give you a home in heaven. So come on. Come on. There may be those today who need a father, a heavenly father. Come on. You need a caring father. Come on. Come on, God. Come on. He, he died that you might have this, this life and this ability. So come on. Is there one? Is there one who desires who, who desires to be a candidate for baptism today? You want to be saved. You don't know how to be saved. Come on. We'll, we'll take you through the steps of salvation. Come on. Is there one? Yes. Let us stand as we extend this invitation. Is there one? He died for you. Come on. You don't have to do anything but come. You don't have to clean yourself up. You can't clean yourself up. Let him do it. Come on. All he wants you to do is step out and walk down. He'll do the rest. Is there one who desires to be saved today? Come on. There may be one who desires to connect with Mount Pleasant and the Christian experience of my letter. You're welcome today as well. There may be those who desire to rededicate or recommit your life. You may come to him today as well. The altar is open for discipleship. We should never in a service that the word has been preached, we should never assume that everybody is saved. We extend the invitation today. We are concerned about your relationship with Jesus because it's more about relationship than it is membership. Establish the relationship with Jesus and he'll connect you with the church that he wants you to be at. So come on. Is there one? There may be those who desire a prayer. You may come. We extend the invitation to you today. Prayer is sorely needed in our nation. In our churches, in our community, our schools, our families, on our jobs, we just need prayer. There's so much going on, y'all. We, we need prayer. Our leaders, our political leaders need prayer. God has, has told us that we ought to pray for those in authority. Is there one? Is there another? The altar is open. already done. 
in our lives. Is there another?
still in a celebratory mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 I just think it's, it's time that God's people, that, that we let the world know, we get a world of reason for wanting to come in the house. Yeah. A lot of times when there's some noise going on, you wonder what's going on where that noise is. So we ought to give them a reason to want to come to the house, and the way we give them a reason is we celebrate. Yeah. We have, we have a reason and a right to celebrate because of who Jesus is and what he has done in our lives. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the guest to lead us in our communion litany. Thank God, have mercy on us as we pray. Give me As we come to the Lord's table, let us come with the spirit of humility and patience. Compassion, God, have mercy on us. We pray. Let us examine ourselves, our thoughts, our actions, our motives, and our attitude toward others. O oh, Holy God, have mercy and forgive us for our shortcomings. Help us to remember our responsibility to our families and our neighbors, our stewardship to you, and the work you have given to our hands. O oh, living God, we stand in need of your grace, strength, and mercy. As we eat the bread which represents your body, which is the true and living bread, Open our eyes to recognize the intimacy that you yearn to share with us. O oh, Lord God, teach us to love you above all else. As we drink the cup which represents Christ's blood shed for us, we thank you for the new covenant, love you one another, which is written in our hearts. Let us rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Tend the Father, may your great sacrifice of redeeming love renew us for loving service and sacrifice for others. May this Lord's Supper energize every area of our lives and enable us to transcend our circumstances, our in inadequacy, and our enemies. God who sees us, touch and empower us so that our lives will be renewed. Praise you, O oh God, who made us your own people through the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Abide in us, Savior and Redeemer. Fill us with the life giving power of your Spirit now and forever. Amen. 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 We thank God for what He has done and is doing. As we get ready to his elements on that night when she was betrayed. God saw fit to establish the Lord's Supper. And for that, we are thankful for that institution on that night. At this time, we're going to ask Reverend Diane Murdoch to lead us in our communion prayer. Father God, we're grateful that we have the ability and the privilege to come before you and to pray over your life. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the elements that are placed here before us. Yes. Allow those elements, which are physical, Lord, to become spiritual. Yes. That we may take them with a heart that is sincere and a heart that is submitted to you in your word, to your truth. Lord, may as we take this element, Lord, let it be in remembrance of all that you have done for us on the cross. 
And God has for something as we drink. May it be received into our spirits and into our physical body. That you, God, may be yours. And God, that we may be healed and live in the same And we thank you for it. Thank you for in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 disciples together took something that all of them had that everyone had in their house took the bread, blessed it and break it and said take eat this is my body took the cup and said drink ye all of it this is my blood that is shed for the remissions of sin do this in remembrance of me. Let us stand. On that night, history tells us that they sung. We don't know what Jesus sung, but they brought us something from the Jewish hymn book. So we're going to sing today as we get ready to depart.
Thank you.